This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 42. Fitness, five things that make exercise enjoyable by Mary Yuksh of goodlifezen.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Health Daily, the podcast that brings you the best content in health, fitness, and nutrition five days a week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Dr. Neil Malik. Hey, welcome back to Optima Health Daily, or welcome for the first-timers if you're new here. This is the podcast where I read to you from some of the most popular health and fitness blogs online. And I'm Dr. Neil, your very own personal narrator. As I've been doing for the past week or so, I thought I'd share with you another inspiring quote today. This one, again, comes from Gretchen Rubin and her book, The Happiness Project. She says, give yourself credit for even the smallest effort. That is definitely one of the themes of this show. It's all about progress, not perfection. If you take one small baby step in the right direction, that's a win. And give yourself a pat on the back for it. Now today we're gonna hear from Mary of Good Life Zen talking about ways to make exercise more enjoyable. I know for many of us, just thinking about exercise, we dread it. We think about the gym environment and we go, oh, forget it, not gonna happen. So whether that rings true for you or not, Definitely keep listening because there's some good stuff here. So let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. Fitness, five things that make exercise enjoyable by Mary Yuksh of goodlifezen.com. When I started the fitness challenge, I had no idea what the response might be. I was amazed when over 80 people joined the challenge. It seems that there is a quiet revolution in progress. More and more people want to live a meaningful and wholesome life. There are five lessons I've learned through participating in the challenge this week. Lesson number one, shared aspirations keep us on track. When people started to join the challenge, I followed Leo Babauta's advice and started a forum. The forum is a place where participants can share their journey and get support. It's inspiring. Teaming up with others makes getting fit and staying healthy a lot easier. Lesson number two, make it fun. We're much more likely to sustain healthy fitness habits if we make exercise a fun thing to do. Here's what Leo Babauta wrote in the forum. Quote, My suggestion is not to look for exercise, but for a fun way to get moving. So it might be going for hikes in nature or taking long walks with a good friend or paddling a boat or playing a sport that's fun to you or sprinting around with kids or doing yoga if you enjoy that. It really doesn't matter as long as you're moving and having fun. If you don't know what that might be, Try as many different things as you can, end quote. Lesson number three, every action counts. Sometimes it's difficult to find time for exercise, and that can be frustrating. It's easy to forget that there's also functional exercise, ordinary everyday actions that boost fitness. Kika, a challenge participant, writes, quote, so far today I've walked through Zurich twice. Not really a fitness thing. I just chose to walk to all my chores instead of hopping on the tram. Now, I know it takes 45 brisk minutes from the dentist to school, 35 brisk minutes from school to optician, another 35 brisk minutes from optician to my best friend's house, and then another 15 back to main station. The early morning walk reminded me how much I love my city of Zurich, and I could take in all its beauty with so much more intensity and detail. End quote. Lesson number four, exercise doesn't have to cost a cent. If we're creative, we can find many different ways to exercise that don't cost a bean. You don't need an expensive membership in the gym in order to get fit. Here's how challenge participant Julie finds creative opportunities for exercise. Quote, A week into the challenge, and I realize I am more determined now to improve my fitness level than I was at the beginning. I'm enjoying finding creative solutions to what could become problems if I let them, which in turn would leave me feeling discouraged. Work, life, exercise balance? If I work out at work, then I need to stretch at home. If I have a sedentary day, then I need to do something aerobic at home. I can't afford gym classes. So, jog to the local gym and back again. This is free and has the added benefit to the environment. All those cars parked and lined up so that people can run on treadmills? How to do my load-bearing exercises. I have one kilogram ankle weights. It's about 2.2 pounds. Perfect, for now. Or, I could use one kilogram bags of sugar. Added bonus, feeling smug because I'm lifting the sugar instead of eating it. My goal now is to keep finding solutions when excuses pop up, end quote. Lesson number five, listen to your body. 
it's important to listen to what our body tells us. For example, recovery is crucial, so we need to have at least one rest day within a week of daily exercise. The body tells us exactly when it needs to recover. It can be a delicate balance between listening to what the body wants whilst getting stronger and fitter. Each one of us has a particular strategy in response to this balance. I tend to push myself beyond what may be good for my body. Others may want to remain in their comfort zone. When we understand our habitual strategies, we can change or adapt them. Listening to the body is crucial when it comes to working with pain or chronic illness. I was recently asked the following question. Why do you think some people who have ongoing health problems are happy and some healthy people are unhappy? What do you feel is the main difference between the two? This is how I answered. I think that people who are happy, even though they may suffer from chronic illness, are most likely to embrace two seemingly conflicting mindsets. One mindset is a dog determined to fight for as much quality of life as their condition allows, and more. And the other is to make peace with their condition, accepting limitations gracefully. You just listened to the post titled, Fitness, Five Things That Make Exercise Enjoyable by Mary Yuksh of goodlifezen.com. And here again, I love it, Leo Babauta was mentioned in a post from a different author. Yesterday, if you recall, Steve Cam of Nerd Fitness mentioned him as well, and now Mary too. So Leo is all over the place. Now for my personal take on this post, if you recall, I'm one of those with a chronic condition. So I'm one of those examples of folks who really fight for quality of life. I've said this before. People always tell me, oh, it's easier for you. You're healthy. You can exercise more because you have the time or whatever. They don't realize that I understand what it's like to not be healthy because I have a chronic condition that I can never get rid of. And so the question about why some people who have ongoing health problems are happy and while healthy people may be unhappy, I can definitely relate to that. I was not happy for a long, long time. In fact, after my diagnosis, as I have shared with you before, I was quite depressed. And this didn't just go away overnight. I had to pull myself out of it. I had to take charge of my health and say, you know what? You have two options here. You can sulk and live like this the rest of your life, or you can take charge of your health and start doing something about it. I chose the latter. Don't get me wrong. There are definitely days when I wake up going, why do I have this disease? especially those days when I just don't feel right. But I have found things that help pull me out of it. Exercise is one. It may not be for you and that's okay. Find something though that you like that's not harmful to others, that's not harmful to you, that makes you feel good, that makes you feel happy. When I'm not in the mood to exercise, playing an instrument, playing my guitar is what does it for me. Or turning off the computer, turning off the TV, and cracking open a book that's always been interesting to me, one that I've always wanted to read, like The Happiness Project I mentioned. There's another book on happiness that I'm gonna start tomorrow, in fact. So if you don't feel you're quite happy right now or you're not quite where you wanna be in life at this point, keep at it. I promise you'll get there. Take it from me. Now, before we end for the day, if we can get some more subscribers to the show, we'd be able to commit to many more episodes. So if you'd like to help us out, a really simple and free thing you can do right now is show someone how to subscribe to the podcast. Just share this with somebody. It would be a really big help. Direct them to oldpodcast.com or just show them how to subscribe on their phone. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you're having a great week and I'll see you in tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show, and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us and remember, your optimal life awaits.